live from Washington, D.C. It's theCUBE, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Washington, D.C. for Oracle Cloud World. Hashtag Cloud World, join the conversation. This is Silicon Angle's theCUBE. This is our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Cube alum, back on the stage. He is Deem Tahib, Senior Vice President of Infrastructure as a Service and Platform as a Service, Oracle Business Group. Welcome back. Thanks, man. Three-time alum, man. I'm <laughs> done. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've had a busy year, so you, yeah. you join Oracle, and, and again, been in the SaaS business for a long time. Yeah. Bolt on pass and then infrastructure as a service. Yep. You had a, a hard run. You can boot up the operations. You have a cloud business now. Give us the take. Yeah, it's been great. I, we, we first met in June where we talked about, we launched 40 new PaaS services and then I think our next meeting was October at Open World. So if you think about how we continue to extend uh, the services we're offering to market and then you know, now it's today. So I mean, if you think about like, you know, less than 12 months, yeah. the advancements we've made, I mean, it's been incredible. It's been an awesome ride. Yeah. I mean, not only expanding out the, the past layer that we offer, but then getting that foundational infrastructure as a service in play as well. And a lot of meat on the bone coming on, uh, out right now. A lot of sizzle and yeah. the steak is now on the, the table. The steak's on the you table. You guys got the, got the stuff there. So talk about that. You had a keynote here about this connected layers concept yeah. and the big announcement, the Wall Street Journal, you know, turning cloud computing yeah. inside out, which is on-prem, cloud yep. to the premise. Really kind of different, but game changing. It is. What is so important about this inside out idea and what are these connected layers? What does that mean? I mean, the connected layers is when you look at different layers of cloud. I mean, okay, you have fundamental infrastructure as a service, right? But then ultimately you have to bolt, you have to have that pass layer in the SaaS layer. You need to really be able to offer customers all three layers of that stack in an integrated, engineered, design way in order to really offer them the most value. Because at the end of the day, I could have gone and swiped a credit card and maybe got compute off a vendor. But at the end of the day, what happens when I want to move mission critical workloads to the cloud? I want to move application development to the cloud. I want to do higher order services. And I think that's where, um, um, you know, that's where offering all layer of the stack really comes into play for us. So I had a chance to sit down with Mark Hurd for an exclusive interview. Uh, 58 minutes with Mark Hurd, straight wow. cameras. He was on his game. Yeah. It's like a baseline rally tennis match because he's a big tennis player. <laughs> but he was really awesome. He talked about a couple key things. You're in it to win it. Yep. Okay, and that this is not a new business to you guys. You're doing SaaS. Yeah. But he talked about the customers, what it means to the customers. Yeah. So I asked him a question. I'll ask you the same question. What should customers look at when they have to decide between Oracle Cloud and the competition. Yeah. Because the competition, the numbers are all over the map. Obviously Amazon's got public cloud here, Oracle, and you got Microsoft. Oracle's not even in the top four on the CNBC story yesterday in cloud. Now, are they looking at the wrong cloud? A lot of customer competitive FUD. Yeah. What do you say to those customers when they decide the competitive cloud choice? Yeah. What decision should they make? Yeah, I think when they're looking at it, I mean, you got to look, you know, cloud really is a journey. I mean, to be honest, it's like nobody's starting fresh and is sort of like cloud native tomorrow. Um, you know, everybody sort of starts from where they stand today. So I have investments, I've had applications that have long tails. So ultimately, how do I migrate to cloud over time? It's not going to be a wholesale lift and shift. There might be certain workloads I might move. I might doing, be doing things like application development. I might have started out with the SaaS app, but then as soon as I did that, I said, wow, how do I actually connect that app back to what's on premise? Or if I have multiple SaaS apps, how do I actually connect those SaaS applications together? And so I think customers are starting to understand that a little bit more, understand that there's a progression and a journey, and they need somebody that can take them through all layers of the stack. Um, you know, so we're finding that actually real interesting. Companies are coming to us saying, I mean, look at it, okay, you know, I got HR apps, I got CRM apps, I got marketing apps, I got Marketo, I got SAP, I got Adobe. Um, you know, I got, it's like, wasn't cloud supposed to be easy? So people are feeling like, okay, like, how do I actually tie all these pieces together? How do I get analytics out of combining all these things? How do I move them forward in, in, a, in a way that actually makes sense? And so I think when people are getting serious about cloud, and we're not talking commodity compute or archival storage, but really thinking holistically about how I run my business on cloud, um, that's when we're getting, starting to get a lot of attention. And I think it's because we can come in and offer all layers of the stack. So, Steve, I got to ask you. So, you've been a CMO at a public company, a couple, few public companies. Yeah. You got CIO DNA, right? Your dad yeah. was a CIO. That's right. Started as an MIS manager, right? Yeah. You yeah. ever done Shadow IT as a CMO? And right. how'd that work out for you? And, uh, and is what you're doing with Oracle Cloud 
going to swing the pendulum back. I want you to talk about that. I'm going to do I, I probably is one of the worst shadow IT <laughs> offenders there is. You know, and actually when I, I just presented today and I said, look, I have a confession to make. And this was a room full of CIOs. Like, you know, I am a shadow IT, you know, uh, you know person. But I think that's right. Like, let's say in my previous role, I needed to get a 360 view of my customer. So, but we had different systems. I had a different marketing system, a different sales system, a different service system, a different finance system. So literally had a team take data dumps out of all these systems, you know, drop it into some open source, run some analytics on it, augment it with third party data to try to get something. Um, but now if you think about what Oracle offers, you know, I have all the different set of services. I have an integration platform with PaaS that can connect all that. I have a platform that'll give me analytics. So if a CIO came to me and said, Steve, this is something I can give you to help you as a marketer, I'd be all in. I mean, the last thing I want to do is actually have to build that myself. So I think it's a significant shift. I think IT can go in there and be that service broker and come up with package solutions to offer back to LOB, and then I can go focus on what I need to, which is not spending time aggregating the data, but understanding the data and taking action to drive innovation, better customer experience, what have you. So what's the board conversation that you want to catalyze from a CF, CI, uh, CMO perspective? Is it? hey, I don't want to do this, I'm doing this because I had to do this, Yeah. and here's what you need to do to take this away from me and give it to people who know what they're doing. That's Talk absolutely, about that, that I discourse. think that's absolutely right. I mean, I've been pulling it myself together, but if you could give me a single source of the truth, that's aggregated, that's real time, you give me the set of tools that I can use to get the deep visual analytics, I'm all in. I mean, that, that is ultimately what I want, and you know, so I can manage my campaign performance, I can actually watch my customer buying behavior and trends and optimize the experience for them. So all those things sort of fit into it, but rather than, again, spending time chasing down the data, aggregating the data, and running the analytics myself, if they can provide me a platform to do that, you know, then I'd go back to doing like what I do best on the marketing side. So talk about um, the messaging that you've been working on for the last you know, year or so uh, yeah. around cloud. Uh, we've seen companies do it before. You saw Microsoft big shift to the internet back in the 90s. Uh, Oracle, you know, late to cloud, certainly from a marketing standpoint, is it more than just messaging? Is it cultural? And can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think there's a few things. I do think we have such an important story to tell. And I think Oracle's stories may have been more product-centric, mm -hmm. but when you sort of look at the solutions and what we enable out there, I mean, most of the world's information like runs on Oracle. So you think about humanitarian, you think about healthcare, you think about education. I mean, what we do has actual real impact on what people are doing out there. And we're trying to tell more of those stories, more solution-oriented stories, more stories that align a business buyer, like a marketing story. I think would understand, and then you can ultimately progress down to the particular products and services they want. But I think you know we're just sort of changing that dialogue. And the great thing is, is we have the credentials. I mean, Oracle's been around for 40 years, so this is just another one of those transitions that we work through our customers with. We have mainframe, client server, internet, mobile, cloud, and this is just a, another progression. And you've had changing business dynamics, changing technology, and you know through each one of those, you've been able to be that trusted advisor. So I think people understand that. And with the lateness of cloud, I will say it's interesting because we've showed up with one heck of a complete solution. So when you look at all layers of the stack and ultimately what we've been able to bring to the table, I mean, we have conversations nobody else can. Like that announcement today, AWS can't tell, tell you that story, you know, around delivering public cloud act customer in that way. You know, um, uh, Azure can't tell you that story. So we're doing things in a differentiated way that actually allow customers to migrate to cloud. You know, it gives them choice. So I want to ask you a question about the cloud at the customer. Yeah. Cloud at customer. Yeah. It sounds like, which customer? All customers. So you have yeah, the inside out thing. I want to get exactly. comments on that. And then um, I want to get a comment on that. But talk about this customer, cloud yeah. at customer. Yeah. What is that? Is it programs and software? Is it hardware? I mean, is it a service? I mean, I think it's an umbrella term for being able to deliver public cloud services to a customer that sits behind their firewall. Now ultimately when you get into what you need to go in and install, we sell something called a cloud machine which is on the price list. But at the end of the day, it's much more about a suite of services that are, let's say a customer wanted to actually use public cloud, but for issues around regulatory, data sovereignty, performance, other sort of compliance issues, they weren't actually allowed to adopt public cloud services. Yeah. Now we've done it in a way where we can actually take our public cloud, Bring deliver it, it behind their firewall, and so now they can adopt it and consume it and have that So they have to buy a cloud machine to get that, right? That is what we would ultimately go in and install, okay. but 
uh, the pricing is actually based on a subscription basis. So database as a service, Java cloud service, integration cloud service, it's actually the same subscription based pricing that they would uh, pay on. Okay, so I want to get cloud. a comment from you. I was something going around, the, I've been wrote it down, it's also going on the hallways here. Yeah. And Oracle has been talking about it. It says not only do you guys have one, or have one platform for every use case, but you have one platform for every stakeholder. Yeah. Comment, what does that mean? I mean, talk about that dynamic, because that means you got not all the use cases covered, but all the stakeholders of the people. I think is that for the buyer, is that the implementer, the decision maker? What I mean, does that I mean? think it spans both. So if you think about it, you know, from, you know, we just talked about a CMO perspective yeah. and being able to actually engage with the line of business and say, what are those universal things you care about? Secure file sharing, getting real-time analytics, being able to foster collaboration and sharing amongst your teams, sales collaboration, marketing campaign performance management. So I can go with HR, I can go in with the story for line of business that's going to resonate. And then I can package up a service offering that's going to connect. Or I got, you know, if you're a business analyst, I can go up and down the stack on having a full visual analytics and big data offering for them. Or if I'm an architect, you know, how do I architect across premise, across cloud, integrate IoT and mobile, manage across so the premise. So the people who are cloud. building stuff, digital builders. The people that are that are, yeah, exactly. Those would be the architects as well. And then you have your DBAs. So we can okay. really go in with a message for traditional IT for line of business, data scientist, uh, data okay. analyst, and so that's actually a big, you talked about sort of our, our push and what we've been doing the, the last so what, year. So if, I, so if I say that the driver of cloud in the Oracle equation, okay, hits all the use cases and personas and yeah. stakeholders, I get that. What, what's the biggest driver? Is it the line of business? Because they seem to be the ones doing the shadow IT first, and you see them dipping their toes and kind of doing siloed clouds. Yeah. Is the line of business the driver right now in the overall enterprise momentum, or is it IT? I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's either or. It's going to depend on the size of the company. I mean, you know, particularly line of business. You know, the early activity you've seen around infrastructure as a service and just sort of getting raw compute to run things on. If I'm like a citizen developer or somebody in sales trying to create an app. So I think that's where you've seen the early success, but I think IT is involved, understanding that's going on, and actually playing that role in terms of how can I aggregate across all these pieces and actually deliver it as a service to line of business versus actually having a line of business need to do it themselves. But I think we need to approach both buyers with the story, because it's not going to be either or. It's not going to be it. one way or another. It's going to be different depending on companies. So we want to make sure that we've covered all potential paths. And whether it's line of business or not, there's a huge pile of money that is going to shift from IT labor. Yeah. You know, Heard talked to you, John, about this on your interview. He said a big chunk of money is going to move from I IT operations to vendor R and D. I thought it was yeah. an interesting way to, to put it. Yeah. We think the number is 200 billion over wow. the next 10 years. So, because people realize it's just a waste of money to be provisioning compute yeah. and, and storage. Agree. So my question is. Where's that money going to go? Are they putting it into apps? Are they putting it to the bottom line? What do you see? I think it's going to be mixed, but I think that's, that's a brilliant statement because you know, we actually think that when you look at migrating from on-prem to say Oracle database in the cloud, where you can create up to 60% of the value cost there. We can free that up because you're right, the majority of the cost is on the ongoing operational management of something. Okay, you know, I can save on the compute and I can save on the storage and the power and cooling and the software moving to, let's say, you know, IaaS. But at the end of the day, if I'm still managing the databases, if I'm provisioning them, if I'm updating, packaging them, that's where the bulk of the cost is. And that's what you actually get if you still run on AWS, if I'm just moving workloads to the cloud. Mm -hmm. With Oracle, we take all that on for you, we automate for you. I mean, again, who better to manage Oracle database than Oracle? So we believe we can free up about 60% of those cost savings, and then those go into things that matter the most to the company. Is it you know, developing and innovating products? Is it creating a better customer experience? Is it operational efficiency and bottom of line. So what are those things that are core to their business and how do they actually take this opportunity to move the cost savings they get coming with Oracle to actually those things that probably matter much more to them. So with the Oracle Cloud Machine, you've got a consistent operational model. What's new to us anyway about that product is it takes one step further and, and, and has offerings for the developer. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. Because you guys, I mean, obviously you talk about developer, you talk about Java. But you don't, you're not desperate about reaching developers. You got a lot of people developing apps and yeah. extensions to apps using Java and other tools. You're offering yeah. Python, or et cetera. Yep. Talk about that lever in terms of the customer impact. Yeah, 
Well, I think that lever is actually the same for public cloud as it is for the public cloud at customer or the public cloud machine. Uh -huh. So it is your same Java cloud service, your integration cloud service, you know, and then we wrap it. I mean, we have app containers. We have all those things, those tools you need. Ruby, Python, JNode. It will support open source languages as well. So we do have a really strong, robust community, yeah. obviously coming from our history of Java. And so this is actually the same tools that they could consume to public cloud, but if you had a set of developers that couldn't have access to that, you know, given they couldn't consume public cloud, now we're actually able to allow them to consume that cloud innovation you know, on-prem behind their firewall. And that's something we've never seen before in a hybrid solution. So how does that differ yeah. from, from your competitors? I mean, certainly, you know, IBM will talk about you know, its offerings in that regard, yeah. and you see other vendors, EMC and VMware are sort of trying to get there. Yeah. Amazon's not, they're saying sweep everything into the yeah, public Yeah, exactly, cloud. yeah, but it's a one-way street. How are you guys different? Well, I, I think this particular announcement is very different. So first of all, those other vendors, like the EMCs, the IBMs, the HPs, they've been sort of stuck trying to do, they gave up on public cloud and they're trying to do private cloud. Mm -hmm. I mean, this announcement isn't private cloud. This is being able to take public cloud and actually deliver it on customer's prem. So yeah, AWS does not have this offering. You know, um, Azure announced something similar, they called Azure partners, Stack, yeah. but what that is is, okay, HP or Dell has to rack or stack it and insert it to my environment, and Microsoft actually doesn't manage it. It's a Dell or an HP that would actually have to manage it, but with us, it's actually the same sort of integrated cloud management you'd get using public cloud, so it's really seamless. I mean, so what's the it, benefit to the customer of that? Is it one throat to choke? Is it's it... one throat to choke. It's, I mean, you're not putting extra hops in the network in terms of who I need to work with to consume these services. It'd be no different than point and clicking on the web and downloading services you know, from oracle.com or consuming them that way. Mm. It just happens to be delivered behind your firewall. But the user experience is identical to consuming cloud um, you know, through Oracle Public Cloud. Mm. Steve, great to see you. Congratulations on your success in, in the year that you had a great run. You get, you're Appreciate still going it. hard. Um, final question for you is, yeah. what should your customers and partners look for this year? As you go this next year forward, you got to you know, continue the momentum. Yeah. What should they expect? What, what will they see from Oracle, from your team? Yeah, I, I think they're going to see much higher level of engagement that's based on sort of the business needs, as we've talked about, engaging with different buyers and personas in sort of their languages. I mean, we sort of look at the competitors. You go to Amazon, you go yeah. to AWS. It's very sort of horizontal positioning, and of course we got that, but that's not exactly how the buyers sort of think of their problems, right? And so yeah, I think, their business. They're, yeah, their <laughs> business. And so like, how do I have a business level conversation with them, which ultimately leads to what the underlying services might be, but you got to start with that business level service. I think you're going to see a much different, or I'd say augmented level of engagement, which actually just expands what we do, because we've talked to the IT guys all the time. And yeah. by the way, we know these line of business people because we sell SaaS apps to them all the time. Yeah. So these are customers that Oracle has, and now we can take the full cloud portfolio to them. And you have the shadow IT cover because you've got developers all the sandboxing that they need to exactly. play around. So the horizontal you got covered. Yeah. Now it's line of business. Exactly, and we can work with central IT to be service brokers, so there could be less shadow IT. And when those guys like have to do shadow IT, I got a solution for them too. <laughs> shadow <laughs> IT in a box, it's the God <laughs> box. That is right. It's the God service. Old cloud, habits cloud are cloud hard service. to break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Steve Deheep, Senior Vice President of the Infrastructure as a Service, Platform as a Service Group at Oracle, real strategic component, great growing area, congratulations theCUBE, bringing all the action here live in DC. We'll be back after more Lift and Strip break, we'll be right back.